Matt, I recorded a quick little video, a 30 minute video for members of our exclusive brotherhood, the Iron Council uh, this week. And I thought it was important enough that I wanted to share with you here on this Friday field notes. So you're going to hear a little bit about why I think it's important that we dress for success. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, some common misconceptions about dressing well and key benefits to improving your style. Now, don't get me wrong. This does not mean that you're going to wear a three-piece suit. We're talking about something that is entirely appropriate to wear given the situation or circumstances you find yourself in, but it is about elevating the way that you look, the way that you present yourself, and of course, the way people see you. Guys, don't sleep on this topic. I am inevitably met with a lot of hesitancy and pushback from men who think that style isn't something that men worry about. That is not historically accurate. And it's doing nothing to serve you as you work to build influence, credibility, and authority with the people in your life and the people that you love. I hope you enjoy this one. Hey guys, I hope all is going well this morning. Hope you're off to a good start. Uh, I'm getting back into the swing of things after being gone for man, a couple of weeks now with some hunts in Texas. Uh, we've had a lot of success and had a good time, uh, and obviously now we're back into it. I, I've seen a lot of chatter and comments about the uh, monthly topic, and I wanted to address that with you because there is some huge, huge misconceptions, and frankly, a lot of you guys are selling yourselves short, uh, and, and you're missing a real opportunity here to level up your life. I know that the concept of dressing for success might seem trivial. Uh, it might seem surface level, might seem nonsensical or unimportant, but I can assure you, if you spend the next, what are we, March 19th, the next 11 days and go all in on this thing, you're going to see results. Absolutely, 100%. I will guarantee that you see results in your life. And what does that look like? Well, your wife's going to be more attracted to you. Clients are going to be more attracted to you. You're going to get presented with more opportunities. Uh, you're going to be taken more seriously. Uh, it, it, it's just pretty amazing when you start to think about how you dress, how you show up, what you look like and how you present yourself. So I'm going to talk about some misconceptions today and we're going to go through that. We're going to hash some of this out because I, I'm, I'm a little dumbfounded by how many men are resistant to this. I've used this analogy in the past, but if I told you to build a home and I said, here's a hammer or here's an impact driver, uh, or here's a nail gun, and you said, no, I'm not going to use that because you know, I, I don't think we need to, you're going to build an inferior home. <laughs> it's just the reality of it. Uh, I had a great conversation with one of our battle team leaders uh, just a couple of days ago, and he said there was, a, there was a debate, it was a heated debate about why men should judge people on the content of their character as opposed to the way they look. Now, I don't disagree with that necessarily, but that's a false dichotomy. It's a false dichotomy to believe that you either have to judge people based on their character or based on the way they look. And what's interesting about this is anybody, including you, who's ever said, well, you know, I, only, I don't judge a book by its cover. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'm calling you out right now, and I want you to be very, very honest with yourself about it. Let's take an extreme example. Let's say you go to the gym, and you're looking around, and you see a bunch of people, guys working out, ladies working out, and you're looking around, and you see uh, an attractive woman. Let's be honest. Okay, guys, we can be honest here. If we're not going to be honest here, we can't be honest anywhere. You see an attractive woman. She's got a great body. She's got a great ass. She's wearing clothes that reveal maybe more than it should, but you're going to check her out, right? Like any man's going to check her out. And if you're saying, no, I'm, I'm a married man, I wouldn't check her out. You're lying. You would check her out. You may not gawk. You may not be inappropriate, but you're going to catch a glance. 100% you are. Are you judging her on the content of her character? Fuck no, you're not. You're judging her on the way she looks. She looked good in that pair of yoga pants. Now, conversely, let's say there's another woman in there and she's 100 pounds overweight. She doesn't look great. Physically, you're not attracted to her anyway. Do you say, oh, I'm sure she's a sweet spirit? No, you don't say that. In fact, you don't even give her the time of day. You're judging people on the way they look. Let's say you're going to hire an attorney for some work. 
you go into the the uh, the law firm that you've that you've uh, set an appointment with, and the guy is sharp. He's got a great suit on. He looks the part. His office is impeccable. His office assistants are respectful and professional and on top of things. The guy shows up on time. He sits you down in this beautiful office, this conference room. He's got the suit. He's got the look. He's got the demeanor. And he starts to talk with you about whatever your legal issue is. You feel a lot of confidence in that guy. Let's say conversely, you go into another law firm and it's one of those, you know, cheap law firms and the guy's kind of a slob. It's a little bit of a hole in the wall place. You can't really find the place. His office staff is non-attentive, dismissive, maybe even non-existent. You walk in, the guy doesn't look the part, doesn't act the part, doesn't dress the part. Who do you hire? Of course, you're going to hire the guy who looks the part, who you think is going to help you produce results. I don't understand why guys say, I only judge people on the content of their character. No, you don't. You're lying to yourself. You judge people based on how they look. Now, you could be wrong. I'm not saying that. I've been wrong. I know plenty of sharp-dressed guys and gals who are pieces of trash as human beings, but the first approach is always, what do they look like? How do they present themselves? How do they look? Now, some people might say, well, you know, Ryan, if, if, but if I got a referral or if I got an introduction to that person I, and that guy, that lawyer was, you know, on top of it, even though he looked the way he is, I, I would hire him. Right. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about first impressions and what somebody like that would say about that is no longer a first impression. Now you're going based off credibility, which is borrowed credibility that you have with another person. That's why you got the referral. Guys, why do we overlook this? I don't understand. Now, a lot of the times when we approach this dress for success topic, guys will say, well, I don't want to wear a three-piece suit. I don't want you to wear a three-piece suit. Why would you wear that? I don't, look what I'm wearing. This is entirely appropriate for this conversation. I've got our, our new order of man hat on. I've got an uh, iron council shirt or iron sharpens iron shirt on. I've got that behind me. This is entirely appropriate. I don't look like a slob. Clearly, I'm intentional about what I'm wearing, but no one would say I'm dressed up. Now, if I take my girlfriend out on a date, I don't wear this. Last night, her and I went out and I put a nice pair of pants on. I actually cleaned my boots. I didn't wear different boots. I just cleaned them and conditioned them. I've got some Red Wings that I wear. They're, they're my go-to. I didn't put on, you know, wingtip shoes that I'd wear to church. Of course not. But I cleaned my shoes. I polished them. I made them look nice. I put a nice fitting pair of jeans on. I wore a chambray shirt. I did my hair. In fact, I got a haircut yesterday because I knew we were going to go spend time together. I trimmed my beard. I put deodorant on. I, I, cl I clipped my nails. Guys, what, what, is the, what is the aversion here? I think it's that too many of us are lazy. We see reality, or excuse me, we see life different than reality. Like, I would like it to be this way. I'd like people to judge me based on my capability. That's fine and great, but that's ridiculous. Because that's not how you do it. And that's not how anybody else does it. Now, sure, you have to have something that backs up the way that you look, right? If you're an attorney, to go back to our previous example, and you looked apart, but you're dog shit when it comes to performance, you're going to be found out. But that's not the conversation that we're having. The conversation that we're having is setting yourself up for success. More opportunities, better credibility and respect with other people, more influence with other people. That's what we want, right? So look the part. Again, for those of you who are jumping on late, that doesn't mean wear a three-piece suit. And I, I really appreciate in your fantasy land that you think you judge people by the content of their character. At some point, probably. But what I would suggest to you, and I titled this live video this way on purpose, the way you look is your ticket to entry. That's it. It's your ticket to entry. It's your ticket to entry with women. It's your ticket to entry with, with clients. It's your ticket to entry with other relationships. And then from there, there's more that goes on behind the scenes where you actually have to prove that you are somebody of value. But we're just talking about the ticket to entry. And don't you want to get into more opportunities, more clients, more 
romantic relationships, a deeper romantic relationship, better relationships with your kids. It starts with the way that you look. It's not the breadth of what we do. It's an element of what we do. Let's get into some comments here, guys. Okay. All right. If you have questions, drop them. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, address some of these comments. And if you have questions, like I said, uh, drop those in the comments and I'll get to it. She has good character. Michael Ferguson says she has good character. Yeah. Nobody says that. Unless they're joking. She's a sweet spirit, right? We've all heard that. Oh, she has good character. She's a sweet spirit. That means she's ugly. Okay. For those of you who are afraid to say it, that means she's ugly and you're unwilling to say it. You're not interested, clearly. Marcus, uh, oh, let's see. Tony Rapino says, I absolutely do judge a book by their cover. If I meet someone staring at their toes and looking like a slob, uh, I will immediately assume our values don't align and I, will, and I won't spend much, uh, much of my valuable time to learn everything about the person. That's right, Tony. And a lot of guys will say, well, man, you could miss out on a great opportunity. Yeah, I could. But we have so many decisions to make on a daily basis that I just have to make the best one. And spending time with a slob is to me an indicator that that person's probably a slob in other aspects of their life. And I can't spend my time engaging with relationships like that. Now people say, oh, that's shallow, Ryan. That's shallow, I can't believe. You do it too. Everyone does it. You have to make decisions. Our time is finite. We have to make decisions. And the way that we present ourselves is the first decision that we make. Peter says, first impressions matter. Rick says, uh, I guess there are dudes who have who have neglected it or don't understand it well enough that it might need the time to get up to speed. Everything we wear is a costume. Um, I think I understand. So Dustin Mayberry said, or, or Mayberry says, everything we wear is a costume. I, I think I agree with the sentiment. I don't like the verbiage because when you say costume, like when do we wear costumes? Halloween comes to mind. When we're pretending to be something we're not. That, that's when we wear a costume. I think I agree with the sentiment, but the, the differentiating factor here is that I don't wear costumes because I'm trying to pretend that I'm something I'm not. I'm trying to accentuate who I actually am. So there's some disingenuine, disingenuineness in costume versus what I'm telling you is to just level up the way that you look, level up your appearance. It's still genuine but you're accentuating and highlighting more of who you are and what you want to present to the world. Because you guys might think, for example, you're disciplined and you might really want to portray that to your wife or your kids or your colleagues, coworkers, clients, et cetera. But what you wear doesn't signal that. Your, your shirt doesn't fit. You've got 50 pounds of, of extra weight that you're carrying around. You know, you're wearing cargo shorts, you're wearing socks with sandals. And so people are going to interpret that to mean something. So you want to make sure that what you're wearing is in alignment with who you believe yourself to be. Let's go to Ryan Partain. He says, I would think that the guys in I see that are balking about this topic are struggling with insecurity in their appearance and are afraid that an investment in their appearance won't make a difference and will confirm their fear. Yeah, I agree with that, Ryan. I think that's probably true. Uh, they, they, they think that it, it won't matter. They don't know how to do it. Uh, they, they wish life was different. It's not. And by the way, it doesn't take a large investment. You know, get, get yourself two pairs of pants that fit well. I've got these Red Wings. I bought those for probably, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. I've had them for a decade, literally a decade. And I think I've resold them twice, maybe once. Like, I don't need to go buy a new pair of shoes. I'm just going to get those resold. And I condition, I take care of them. I buy high quality things so that I can have it for a long period of time. Joey Gomez says, investing in yourself, AKA the way you dress is never a bad idea. Sure, it's more money, but it's, it's also more impact on those around you. So Joey, I think you're right. I wanna talk about price and cost. I'm just making some notes here. Price versus cost. We need to understand this, this is an economic lesson. There's a price tag associated with everything we buy. Right? If you go buy a brand new pair of jeans, and it's $100 on the price tag, that's the price, it's $100, it's objective. It's, it's flat, it's $100, that's it. There's no interpretation about it. 
Then we have what we, what we would call the cost. So there's a difference again between price and cost. The cost is $100. But let's say you buy that pair of jeans and you feel good about the way that you wear them. You think they look good and you carry yourself just a little bit better. And you buy those jeans to go into a brand new interview or out on a date. And because you have those jeans and you look good and you look the part and you feel good, you carry yourself with more confidence, you land the interview or the job. You land the date or the second date because you're wearing those jeans. Now the price is $100, but you just secured a job. Now look, I know this is not the only factor, so this is an extreme example, but you secure the job partly because you're wearing those new jeans and you look good, you feel good, you present yourself well. You secure the job, you were making 100,000, now you're making 120 grand a year. What was the cost of those pair of jeans? Zero. Didn't cost you anything. Yes, the price was $100, but you used that and leveraged the way that you looked to produce a desired result, which created an additional $20,000 a year of revenue for you. I know that's an extreme, maybe even silly example, but you get the point. If you invest in your clothing and your appearance and the way that you look, and you spend a little time maybe looking at what other men are wearing on Instagram that you think look sharp, right? Or you, you, you go to a nicer store, you spend maybe just a little bit more money and you buy the things that fit and you invest into yourself, it's going to be returned to you. That's the difference between price and cost. <clears throat> Joseph says, I think more than laziness, it's more than shit. It's more, I think more than laziness, it's more than shame. Guys who resist know they look awful. They don't want to confront it. So they argue against the idea. This topic has been great. I think guys need to understand it's not about picking the best shoes. It's about considering and communicating your why and all things. Dead on with that, Joseph. I like that last part. It's considering and communicating your why. What, what I would call that is intentionality. You're just being intentional. When I go hunting, I wear intentional clothing. I made a post a couple of days ago about this. The three F's of style are fit, fabric, and function. And you need all three. If it's functional and doesn't look good, yeah, maybe it'll look functional, but you're not gonna garner any influence and credibility with other people. And every opportunity comes with other people. If it fits well, but it doesn't function, I could wear a suit out on a hunt, but it's not gonna function very well, and that's not gonna be real practical. The fabric is the way that it looks. So if you use cheap fabric, then it's going to look cheap. If you use the right fabric for the right occasion, then you're going to have success and you're going to look the part as well. So I like the idea of intentionality. Emmanuel Diaz, I work public accounting in the Bay Area. The office attire has been changed drastically. Jeans and a button up is accepted, but it's easy to slack off and dress sloppy. I'm not trying, let's see, I try not too, but sometimes I catch myself getting sloppy. Yeah, it is. There's some drift associated with this. So if your office lacks uh, a dress code or starts to lack on it a little bit or slack on it a little bit, then it's easy to drift. But you could actually look really, really good in a pair of jeans and a button up. And how do you do this? Well, first you get jeans that fit. Uh, an example of this, and I love this person, so I'm, I'm throwing them under the bus a little bit, but I think very, very highly of this person. Well, there's two people that come to mind, Ed Milet and Jocko Willink. Horrible, horrible style. Now, granted, they're successful in their own right. So you might say, see, style doesn't matter. I think it does. I think if they looked better with what they wore, they would even have more influence than they already have. Jordan Peterson, a great example. Now, I don't like what he wears, but clearly he's intentional about what he's wearing. His Too Faced shirt or a suit where he's got like the white and the black or the purple and the blue, whatever it is. I don't, I don't like that, but he's being intentional about it. When you go to one of his lectures, he's always in a beautiful, probably custom fitted, custom tailored suit. He's trying to perfect, uh, 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 I can't even think of the word, portray intelligence, professionalism, right? He's deliberately trying to do that. It makes sense. Ed Milet wears baggy jeans. I'm like, bro, you're fit. You're Jack. You're successful. Get a pair of jeans that fit. Jocko Willink will wear cargo shorts. He'll wear dad shoes with ankle socks. Like it looks, it doesn't look good. Look the part, dress well, and you're going to have even more influence. I know a lot of guys are going to be like, well, they're successful. Yeah, I know. I know they are. That's the exception. And you're not Jocko and you're not Ed Milet, neither am I. 
Chad says, the best thing I learned from following Tanner is wearing the right colors and clothes that fit right. I noticed a change in my confidence in public right away. I think that's a huge advantage, guys. And one that we often overlook is if you look good, you play good, right? If you're fit and you're wearing shirts that fit, pants that fit, you're wearing the right attire, even though it's not that three-piece suit, you're going to carry yourself different. And there's something to be said for that alone, the fact that you feel good about yourself. Reese says, speak to men dressing their team and crew. A young man on our team call is questioning his landscape crew and their performance on his client's lawns, suggesting his crew's appearance, maybe a standard uniform can pay off. Absolutely. Look, we take blue collar work and we think, well, I can just wear whatever I want. I can wear dirty clothes and wear dirty shoes. I can wear a t-shirt, you know, a graphic t-shirt with Mickey Mouse on it or whatever. And you think that your clients are going to appreciate that as much as somebody who comes not with cargo shorts, but a nice fitting pair of khaki shorts, a nice polo shirt that's branded. That's the right color that has the logo. You're all wearing the same uniform. I think this about high school sports teams. I see this all the time in basketball and football, whatever the sport is, coaches are wearing whatever the hell they want. Like, what are you guys doing? You tell your team to wear this specific uniform, the specific colors. You have two or three uniforms per season. And you coaches come, you're not even wearing the same shoes. You're not wearing the same shorts. You're not wearing the same shirt. I don't understand. If you're a coach and you've got five coaches, let's say, or three coaches, whatever it may be, y'all need to wear the same shoes. Y'all need to wear the same shorts. Y'all need to wear the same dry fit polo shirt. Y'all need to wear the same hat. It's a uniform. Look good. What are you portraying? Discipline, commitment, pride in the team. What are you communicating to your team? That you are part of the team, that you are not an individual, that you are part of this group, that you will do exactly what you require of your team members. Guys, look like, just look the part. Again, if you're doing landscaping, I'm not saying that you should wear a bathing suit on one end of the spectrum or a three-piece suit on the other. I'm saying put on, take the cargo shorts off, put on a nice fitting pair of khaki shorts, put on a whatever your company color is with a nice logo across the front left chest all of you wearing the same thing if you if hats because you're out in the sun all day sure a hat's appropriate make sure it's a colored hat with that matches with your branding this is very very simple stuff and it goes a long way and by the way if two gardeners came to me let's say i wanted to have my lawns and maintenance done out in the yard and i had two people come over and one of them just looked they they drove this nasty truck they, they looked like slobs they didn't, they didn't communicate well. And then the other one came with a nice clean truck that's branded. They came, they, they had the khaki shorts on and the polo shirt and the hat, and they were professional about the way they presented themselves. I would hire that. Now you might say, well, the other guys might be better. They might, but I'll never know because that's not what we're making decisions on. Neither are you. Again, to reiterate my point. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So Robert Gillespie says, sounds like, I don't really... Maybe I need to go back and see. Oh, okay. So Jaden, um, I missed this one. I do have a question. Like they say, I dress nicely and I am in decent shape, but that has led to people saying it makes me seem like a player. So I'm wondering, is that something to embrace? I always related it to a negative con uh, connotation. Well, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, a couple things could be going on here. Maybe you have a misrepresentation of how you actually look, so it's good to get objective feedback. And if you start to notice trends, then maybe that's something you should consider. Um, maybe it's the people that you're hanging out with. They just don't appreciate somebody dressing well and dressing up. And I don't know which one that is. So you'll have to, you'll have to consider that. Uh, based on your demographic or your target audience, so for example, if you're single, I don't know if you are, Jaden, but if you're single and you're trying to approach women or get dates or build relationships with women, then it's probably a good idea to ask women about your appearance. Hey, what does this say about me? What, like what I'm wearing, what does this say? Do you, do you appreciate it? Do you not appreciate it? Uh, and that might give you a better idea. So it could, could be one of those two things. You have to be careful because a lot of the times, friends, especially if you start to improve your style, friends will make fun of you. Oh, well, look at you, Mr. Rich guy over here. Oh, who are you trying to impress? Oh, man, you're trying to outdo us? Friends will say that. So you have to be aware of that. If everyone would just wear a moo hat, we'd all know who they were. Exactly. It's easy, Rick. It's easy. 
Robert, I also feel attacked every time there's a mention of cargo shorts since Magellan fishing gear has become a daily staple to my Florida man status over my jeans and insulated boots. I'm not saying cargo shorts are bad. I wore cargo pants when I was in the military. But if I'm going out on a date with my wife, there's no reason to wear cargo shorts. Again, fit, fabric, function. The function's not there. Going out with somebody, I don't need to wear cargo shorts. The fit's off. They're sitting too low on the knee. They're not high enough. They're not fit enough. Like it's, it's just, now if you're going out in, in war or going out fishing, okay, like nobody's going to bag on your cargo shorts. But if you're doing it in an inappropriate places, then of course you're going to get made fun of. Of course. Yeah. See, so Robert says, I mean, 25 years in Alaska, then moving to Florida has some lifestyle changes. Right. So you need to adjust to that. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is a good point that John made. You don't have to like what someone else is wearing to know they're dressing well. I think that's the point I was making with Jordan Peterson. I don't necessarily like what he wears. I wouldn't wear that. I don't, I don't, I don't think it looks great, but I also know he's being intentional about it, and I can't appreciate that. All right, let's go to Carrick. He says, I think there may be some confusion between dressing with style, which is current, which is current society can be perceived as flamboyant, the point of the conversation is dressing well, falling back to those three F's that you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, we use style, right? We use that term, but you're right, three F's. And, and that's why I don't use the term fashion, by the way, because fas fashion would be even more repulsive to men than style is. But we all want to be stylish. My bro and I are handyman, and we match almost every day with our business shirts and blue jeans. We definitely stand out compared to the competition. Of course you do, Spencer, and I commend you for doing that. Go the extra step. Michael says, as for Jocko in uniform, I saw a presentation where members of the team had different colored polos. If help, it helped people, I don't know what this is. If help people I'd who was certain shirts were only earned, I don't really know what that means. Uh, John, sloppy in appearance means they will likely do sloppy work. Yep. All right. I think we got through all the comments here. What if I think I, okay, this is a good question. I like this question. Dan says, what if I think I look good wearing cargo shorts? Well, all the power to you, but nobody else does. Nobody else does. And so you might say, well, you know, it's, it doesn't matter what other people think. That's not true. That's a lie, guys. You know, when you hear these tough guys on the internet say, oh, I don't give an F what anybody else thinks. They're lying to you. And they're selling you and themselves short. I care what people think. I care what you guys think. What would it be like if I didn't care what you thought of me? What would it be like if I didn't care what my children thought of me? Or my girlfriend? Or my clients? Or my business partners? How would I actually show up? Guys, the guys who are telling you I don't care what other people think, it's only about how I feel, they're lying to you. And if they believe they're right, they're ridiculous. They're not smart people. Guys, we care about what other people think. The, the differentiating factor is caring about the right people. So I do care about what you think of me. I do care about what my girlfriend and my kids and other people in my life think about me. So part of, not the only, but part of the approach to that is the way that I present myself. Yep, Rob says we all care. Of course you care. So stop saying you don't care. And look, if you want to wear cargo shorts, then just know that people aren't going to take uh, cargo camo shorts even, even, even better. Just know that people are going to take you less seriously. If you're okay with that, then fine. All we're talking about is intentionality. But if you want to be taken seriously, you put the cargo camo shorts away and you'll wear clothes that actually communicate what you want to communicate. I think you were saying that a little bit tongue in cheek, Dan, but also worthy of addressing. Um, <laughs> Josh says, when will you be issuing an icy white apology for the reference of you wearing lingerie on a hunt? Josh, you know, you would have liked to have seen it last week when we were down in Texas. I know it. You don't have to say it. I know it. I saw it in your eyes. All right, guys, do you have any other questions about this? Like, let's get over it. Okay, enough of the stigma, enough of like, oh, just, it's just how you are. And like, look at the content. Sure, look at the content of your character. And also, 
give yourself an opportunity by looking good. Okay, look good. Not the three-piece suit. Look a pro. I'm not wearing a three-piece suit. Do you guys think less of me for what I'm wearing, or does this look appropriate? Let me give you one other example, a little anecdote, a little story. Um, a couple of years ago, I went down to, uh, it was about two and a half years ago. Yeah, two and a half years ago, I went down to Mexico uh, with my then wife, my kids, um, and about eight other guys who were in this similar spaces and, and their spouses and their kids. And we had a great time because we were thinking about doing a conference together. And I got into the airport, my, my ex-wife and, and my kids, we got to the airport and uh, we were looking for other people. And as we were leaving, we started to look around because we knew that there was a couple of other order of man guys and a couple of other guys who we were bringing to this conference. And what was funny is my ex-wife turned to me and she said, Hey, there's one of your guys. And I looked over and sure enough, it was one of our guys and said, how'd you know that? She's like, you all look the same. It's like, you have a uniform, right? She gets it. It's a uniform. If I go into the airport or in a public space, I will see people. I'm like, I bet that guy listens to my podcast. Because I, I see what he's wearing. It's appropriate. That's the point that I'm making. It's appropriate. And you can start to identify who is who based on what you're wearing. You saw this in high school. The jocks and the nerds and the, you know, all the other people in school. You could see what they were wearing and know what tribe they belong to. So what you wear is a, is a representation of who you are. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point, Rick. He says, I wouldn't listen to you if you did wear a three-piece suit. Right. And you know how many people listen to me who wear three-piece suits? Probably not many because it does, doesn't resonate with them. It's a different audience. So I'm intentional about it. Okay, guys? Order man polo. Good idea, Dustin. I'll see what I can do on that. I just got some new hats in, including this one. This one's brand new. This is the uh, curb rim hat, but it's a new pattern, new camo pattern. So we just got this one, and I'll be posting this later this afternoon. Uh, anyways. Enough of the stigma, enough of the like, let's just judge by the content of our character. Like, dive in for the next two weeks and see if it changes things. Dive, like, fully immerse yourself, especially if you're hesitant or resistant about this topic. Dive in. You're here to do something different. You're here to push yourself. Stop fighting so hard against things. Ask yourself, can I dive in for two weeks and really go all in on this subject and be honest in my assessment about what it presents in my life? I think it'll pr produce positive results for you. All right, guys. Uh, Joey, I honestly wear plain black shirts all day. Just eliminates the fact. That's fine. I, look, so here's the, here's the confusion. I'm not saying don't wear plain black shirts. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. And guys will say, well, I don't care what about what I look. I just wear plain black shirts. No, you do care because you're making a decision to wear plain black shirts for a reason. That's intentionality. I'm not saying don't. I'm saying being intentional about what you're wearing to communicate what you want to communicate. Rob, when I worked at a Christian rehab, we required collar shirts everywhere, no hats, appearances, everything. Um, John says, I love wearing three-piece suits. If you get a comfortable, well, I mean, sure, that's fine. I'm not going to ever wear a three-piece suit. It, it, I won't say ever, but very, 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 very rare occasions because I'm just not interested. But again, style isn't about just wearing that three-piece suit. But if it fits you and you feel good and it's appropriate for the situation, all the power to you. All right, guys, I got to go. I hope that helps and gives you some insight. I'll catch you guys soon.